three, two, one. What's happening, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash, and uh, this is today's comic. It's Empire number two. Um, I did a big, long video on the first issue because it was a long issue, um, and I, I thought that was the best way to do it was to really get a lot of my thoughts out so far, what I thought about the book and where it was going and how it impressed me or... Rather, I should say, the impressions it left on me. But I'm not going to do that with all the others. Like, that's just too much. Um, I, truth be told, I could barely even stand really reading these books. Not that they're, like, terrible. They're just not interesting. They're, they're kind of boring. And, and I got to tell you, man, the biggest problem I'm finding is that they're forgettable. Um, I read this book yesterday. Found I, I didn't have time to do a review sat down to do it today and I was like, what the heck happened? I, so I just had to skim read the book again um, to just even remember what the heck's going on. So here we have uh, all the people that are involved. Looks like the Fantastic Four is down to actually four people this time. Um, here's the credits, big two page spread. Uh, I do have to make sort of a correction. On the last video, I had stated that I suspected that the script came from Dan Slott because it was kind of bad. <laughs> um, I had given Al Ewing more credit than I guess I should have because, you know, he did write some good stuff with Immortal Hulk. But it turns out Al Ewing is writing the script for these books. So, all right, yeah. But, uh, sorry. Retraction, correction. Uh, I believe in being honest. I, I was really speculating before, so it wasn't like I was lying i just speculated incorrectly i didn't realize they put a separate credit there so the book starts off and we have this whole scene some ship approaching earth um it leads us to believe that it's probably star lord it's someone that's from earth they say in the dialogue but i'm not sure who it is um and then we cut over to this side and we see some of the avengers are trapped in the trees the animated trees by this character who I know him as Koi. I don't know how to pronounce his name. If you, if I'm wrong, if you have a better pronunciation, throw it down in the comments. Uh, I'm just going to call him Koi, though. Um, so he's got the these Avengers captured. Now, Captain America, I could see being, being held the way he is. Thor and Iron Man can't just break these vines? <laughs> what? Thor right now is, well, he's always a god. But he's also got the Odin power. He's also got the uh, power cosmic from Galactus. Dude is uber right now. Um, he he just he made Galactus kowtow to him. But this little plant dude apparently has got the one up on our boy Thor. This is another example of just the crappy editing, or rather the non-existent editing at Marvel, and nothing really matters. There's really no continuity. Thor shouldn't even be here right now. He's off in space fighting, in my opinion, a much bigger threat in the, um, the was it the Black Winter? Is I think that's what it's called. Not Plant Boy. I, I don't understand why Empire is this big, earth-shattering event. You would think that the Dark Winter that destroyed the previous Galactus, or the, the previous universe that Galactus is from, would be the bigger thing. Oh, that's, just, that's just a story that Donny Cates is writing in Thor. Meanwhile, Marvel's big earth-shattering events about plants. <laughs> uh, so we get this whole villainous monologue of, you know, Thor's like, you were one of us. You know, again, keeping in line with the derivative, you know. It was foretold you would bring balance to the force. Not, uh, you know. I can't even remember the line completely. What is it that Obi-Wan says? I was foretold you'd bring balance to the Force, not not destroy it, or... I forget. Um, bring... Uh, I 
I forget. You guys can comment below. I'm not as big on the prequels as I am on the originals. But the characters just like, oh, wasn't I a Ven an Avenger of sorts? The first Avengers baby, and then he goes off, and we get this whole monologue, two pages. Well, technically one page. Um, and he goes off and basically says, you know, Thor was, you know, oh, you were there a couple of times, but whatever. And it was the swordsman who really raised me. Meanwhile, um, swordsman slices She-Hulk. Because I'm not going to call her fucking Hulk. It's stupid. She-Hulk. Um, it, it slices her on the arm and she goes, ow! Ow. And that stops her. That that stops her. And, and Swordsman gets away. It, stupid. <laughs> and he goes, oh look, they have plant portals just like the X-Men. And they even make a comment that the X-Men have plant portals too. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so back to the monologue. Oh yeah, it is two pages. Oh, three pages of monologue. Oh, no, four pages of monologue. No, five pages of monologue. And finally, at the end, it's like, he's sound. And he's like, wait, what's that sound? And we see Thor say, that boy is the sound of my open hand. And Mjolnir's coming back to him, which is stupid. If Thor, Thor we, we've established, doesn't need Mjolnir to summon lightning and do all this stuff. But, I mean, it's a cool scene. But is this character really that stupid to leave Thor? Like, I just, I don't know. And so, boom, lightning happens. And he's like, no, verily, I say thee, yay. This <laughs> is so dumb. It's, it just comes across like such fanfic. And then we get the, you know, the artists doing their best to draw the, these Avengers in a cool pose. But why is Captain America wearing jeans? Is that in his new costume? <laughs> he just wears jeans now? Dumb. Sorry. <laughs> um, savor this moment in Avengers. Savor your Messiah's mercy. It's the last you'll ever see. And Thor summons lightning down, but it's too late. He's gone. And now it's they talk about that the people on the planet are getting attacked. And so they, like, we've well, got to regroup. And so they're all, Thor's like makes a portal and Ghost Riders rendezvousing, whatever. And then they're like, what about Captain Marvel? Oh, she's rendezvousing with the Fantastic Four. Because apparently she doesn't stick with the Avengers. Just, she just does whatever the hell she wants. Whatever. So, um, then this becomes a Captain Marvel story. Where she's looking and she's thinking about, Oh, look at all these Kree. And you know, they're turned into plants. and Or they're not sorry, they're being killed by plants. And this could have been my mom. And blah, blah, blah. And, um, yeah. So she goes to help. And we see the, the scrolls fighting, Fantastic Four fight. Everyone's fighting, fighting, fighting. And then um, Thing is being turned into a Chia pet, I guess. <laughs> it's literally what's happening. The seeds are getting into the cracks of his body and it's growing these plants. Um, and so we get Hulkling says, Not on my watch, Dr. Richards. Not while I hold the sword of space. And he slashes through Thing. And that scene panel looks really cool. And you're like, oh, he just fucking killed Thing. <laughs> but he doesn't, because the sword doesn't hurt. Um, and we see Richard say, the vines, they're retreating. Hulkling, that sword. Standard issue magic sword, Dr. Richards, for the hand of the king. Standard issue magic sword. That's the writing. That's that's what Al Ewing wrote. Standard issue magic sword. It comes when I call, and it goes where I send it, and it knows friend from foe. More importantly, it seems to disrupt Kotati influence. If we could absorb and redistribute that energy... And then here we go. Not we, Reed. Me. It's a Hail Mary, of course. What it should say is, that's a Mary Sue, of course, because of course it is. And so she talks about its magical energy from an ancient alien artifact. Who knows how it'll work on me? Can I absorb it? Can I contain it? Of course you can, Carol. You're, you're Captain Marvel. You could do anything. So uh, I guess Hulkling stabs her with the sword. Um, and she absorbs all this power and then... Just when it's about to kill her, she explodes, but then she dies anyway. 
but except she's not really dead. And now they're calling her Carl. What the hell is going on? Please, someone who knows more about the last 20 years of dipshit Marvel comics that I was away from. Carol Danvers is from Earth. She's Air Force pilot. This, I know this. She's not Carl. What? What is? Why are you trying to make her like Marvel? I, I don't understand. Please, someone is. Am I missing something? I, I'm sure that I have. There's a ton of shit that I missed. Um, but to me, this comes across dumb. Um, it's, it's bad enough that that she wears the Captain Marvel uniform and they call her Captain Marvel and she can't sell comics and they're on volume ten of Captain Marvel. But it's bad enough. But now you're and now you're having to reshape her history in my in, in my perception that she's. Anyways, I'm getting way in the weeds. This is supposed to be a quick book. So at the end, she shows up and she's like, oh, look, you saved everyone. And she's still alive. And then this woman shows up and um, they, they, how they saved her was with a, a hammer that reads. is like, I use it like a defibrillator. Ho, ho, ho. I'm so smart. Not my hammer. And then what? What's going on? Oh, he, he, you have risen far in the ranks of the military on Earth. But you are of two worlds, Car- Carl Danvers. And have never fought for hours. As acting commander of Kree forces, with the Emperor's approval, of course. For this, you got it. You are offered a place in the Kree Accuser Corps. What say you? <laughs> and Carol Danvers, you know what? Never, She will never turn down an opportunity to become some sort of fascist Accuser Corps. She's like, sign me the hell up. She takes a hammer and I, they just, there's no protocol, just, oh, hey, you, here, you want to become an accuser? So she's got the hammer, and now it's, how many people have hammers now? It's just like, you get a hammer, you get a hammer. So She-Hulk and Carol Danvers now both have hammers. Um, I think if they're not careful, they're going to make Jane Foster jealous uh, because she doesn't have a hammer anymore. So she's like, the second I touch the hammer, it sings. A song of steel and fire. Oh my fucking god. You mean like a song of ice and fire? The derivative, all throughout this book, both books so far, it's just, it's like people, they, they just wrote notes of pop culture and just like, oh, how do, how do we put that in our books? Of righteous wrath and swift action, a song of accusation. There's power here, all right, but a power I'll need to watch carefully or it'll sweep me away. Don't you already have power? Like, is this hammer really adding that much more power to your ridiculously overpowered nature? Um, and so we see that the Cree woman, she's like, yes, oh, so good, she's joined us, and oh, it's to survive the coming of the pyre. And then Emperor Hulkling's like, what? The coming of what? I don't understand. The pyre, my liege. The power and responsibility of the Emperor. The death of a world at your hands. <gasps> what? Dun dun dun! The end. To be continued. So, um, the last book was uh, I didn't talk about this. the The last book was five ninety nine. I, I really should have talked about that in my review. Um, this book was four ninety nine. Um, there's gonna be six books. So, what are you looking at spending? Uh, five. Uh, you're looking at spending over thirty dollars just for these core books alone. These aren't that good. This this book actually wasn't as boring as the last one. Maybe because it was a little bit more concise. It didn't have as many pages. And more direct things happened. It didn't waste as much time. But it, it does still waste time. And none of the stuff I care about. I don't care about Carol getting a hammer. It, it feels so contrived. She doesn't earn anything. She never does. You, you know, the Avengers are like, Oh, look, you're trapped. Oh, no, what are we going to do? Oh, we broke free. Okay, let's go help people not much really happens and the writing it just feels kind of makes you just kind of cringe a little bit every time you read these derivative lines and things i can't really rate this book high so uh, i'm going to give this a two stars um like i said if you are a person who's not quite as uh um snobbish i guess or you know (laughs) as high expectations as i do and if maybe if you like empire if you like modern marvel stuff Give it an extra star. This might be up your alley. I'm not saying this is a trash book. I'm just trying to be very critical of it. Um, Like I try to be all books. I think books should really strive harder to earn quality ratings. Um, 
So that's that's my thoughts. Thanks for watching.